Hello, station students. This next project, we're going to become more familiar with how to use the ruler in Tinkercad. So I'd like you to open up Tinkercad and create a new design. And as always, once Tinkercad opens, we always want to rename our project right away. So I would like you to rename this with your STEM lab number, your last name, and the name of the project. This project will be called Ruler Basic Skills. Now our project is saved and has a new name. The first thing I'd like you to do is we are going to edit our grid. This is much larger than we need. So we're going to come down to the bottom right. We're going to select Edit Grid. And first thing you want to do is make sure you're using the correct units. We've learned about inches and millimeters. This project, we're going to use millimeters. But I want to change my grid size to 50 by 50. So you just need to type in there. I can click tab, get to the next number for the width and the length at 50 millimeters, and I can click update grid. It does look much smaller. I'm gonna scroll in with the wheel on my mouse. So I'm a little closer into my view. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a box onto our work plane. So go over to the basic shapes. I'm going to click on box and bring it in right to the center. Now, first thing I notice with this box is if I have to resize it, I do not know what size this box is. That tells me that I have not set a ruler down on my work plane. I always like to add a ruler to my work plane as the second thing I do. So let's grab the ruler, bring it down, and I'm going to set it to the corner of my work plane in the bottom left corner. Now, as soon as I drop that in place, you will notice I can see the measurements for my box. If I click off of my box, I don't see any measurements. If I click on my box, I can see all the measurements and the sizes. We can also get rid of our box properties as we're not using this right now. So I'm gonna click the up arrow to hide the properties of our box. Next, let's take a look at the size of our box. Our box is 20 by 20 by 20, all right? Now, before I start resizing my box, we also have some other numbers on here. These numbers, 14 and 14 are how far away our box is from the origin of our ruler. So what I'd like to do is move our box to this corner where our ruler is so it's all lined up and we can measure from the corner of our box. I can easily move my box around and get it close, but it's still difficult to get it into that corner. So these green arrows tell me how far away the box is from the corner of the ruler that I've set down. I can easily click in these green arrows, and if I type in zero, zero, it brings the box and lines it up with the center, or I should say the corner, of my ruler. So I can measure off the corner of my box for anything specifically I need. Now, you will also notice when you're on your ruler, it turns red or the origin of it turns red, so you can move it around. That's how you know you're on the origin of your ruler. I'm gonna click undo and put it right back in the corner of my box. Now, when I click on my box, I see the measurements are 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters with my arrows for my width and my depth, as well as my height, as well as these zeros tell me it's located at the corner of my ruler. 
So I would like to reset our box. So our box is 40 by 40. So we're going to click in the width and we're going to change that to 40. And we're going to change our depth to 40. And we're going to change our height to 3. So now our box is almost the size of our work plane. Next, we are going to add a cylinder hole to our box. So you can go over to basic shapes, click on your cylinder, bring it into the center. For what we want to do, this is much too large of a size. So I'm going to resize my cylinder. You can see the measurements for the width here, 20 by the depth, 20, and the height, 20. We want to create a diameter, which is all the way across our circle, by 10 millimeters. So I'm going to click on my width and type in 10. And it only changes our width. So I also have to change the depth of our cylinder to 10. So it stays circular. And the size does not matter because we're just going to use this size to cut out a hole. I often like whatever hole I'm using to be larger than my object. And remember, we made our object three millimeters. So now I would like to place this cylinder in the bottom left corner three millimeters from the front and three millimeters from the left side. How do I know where to place that? That is what these green arrows are telling you, how far away the object is from your bottom left corner. You also have some properties to the ruler that you can change. Notice this green arrow is lined up with the end point of my cylinder, as well as this green arrow, the front edge of my cylinder. If I hover over these three lines, on my ruler, you'll notice it says use midpoint. That is asking you if you would like to switch to use the midpoint measurement. If I select use midpoint, you'll notice these numbers change and now it's telling me how far the midpoint of my cylinder is away from the origin of my ruler. I prefer to use the end point for what we're doing because I want to know it's three millimeters from edge of my box to the edge of my cylinder. So I'm going to switch back to use end point. My numbers tell me I'm nine and ten millimeters away. So we are going to change that to three millimeters from the left edge and three millimeters from the front edge. Now I know I'm exactly three millimeters away from the edge of my box to the edge of my cylinder. It might be hard to see in this view, so you can switch to the top view with this view cube and have a little better view of how far it away, away it is from the edge. Now, in order to create our hole with the cylinder, is we've selected our cylinder. We also have to select our box. If I click on our box, unfortunately, it only selects one object at a time. In order to select both objects, I need to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and select my second object. The properties up here tell me I have two shapes that are selected, so then I can group them. I'm going to use the group button, and when I select that, it cuts the hole out of my box in the bottom left corner just where I placed it. And that is how you edit your grid as well as use the ruler and cut a hole out of an object. That's part one 
of our Ruler Basic Skills project.